I just want to kind of show you uh, where we are uh, and give you kind of a general introduction because you had the intro from Pia. And Pia is an external teacher. She's just a professional Revit teacher. So she came in here as, uh, because we were a little, little bit short-handed. But uh, from now on, it's going to be me doing this stuff. Uh, and I always record all my, uh, my lessons and I put them here under 3D modeling. Uh, and there's something here called Shane's BIM Lectures. So it can't get much easier to understand than that, hopefully. In here, there's a load of stuff you can use. These are all the download links to uh, the different files and so on. Over here on the right, I've got uh, different pages of lessons based on different... Uh, yeah, I've got some Photoshop stuff, and then uh, I've got first semester, which we're in now. Your stuff is going to be in here, autumn 2015. It's blank at the moment, but uh, you can always go into the last semester... Uh, if you want to go into all their video lessons as well, if you want to jump ahead, because uh, it's all in there. Um, and you can go all the way up to fourth semester where we get into uh, more hardcore stuff, yeah, construction management, quantification, timelining, and uh, yeah, you don't need to know about that right now. But uh, at the moment, everything is in here. So you can always come in and uh, have a look in 3D modeling. Change BIM lectures, and then all the lectures are over here on the right-hand side. First semester, second semester, third semester, fourth semester. Okay? So that's where it's going to be. Um, down here at the bottom, I've got uh, title blocks. Uh, and title blocks are just those things you see on architect's drawings that have a frame around the side and a little thing in the corner where you can write in the name of the drawing, the drawing number, and all that kind of stuff. I have those set up <coughs> so you don't have to draw them yourselves. Um, but they're set up specifically for Revit. So today, I just want to start uh, showing you how to set up your model, any model that you've done, how you would make it uh, so that you could print it out in Revit. Um, so I'll just start by downloading this. If I just click on this A3 size, for example, you can see it starts, it's, it downloads over here in the corner. If you can see it, you probably can't see it over there. But down at the bottom here, it's downloaded. I can click on this, and it'll just open up. Uh, it'll upgrade it from the previous version. It was made in 2015 version. And it'll open up in Revit. So it looks like this. So it's got uh, the Kia logo. It's got you know client name, project number, all that kind of stuff. This is just a, a standard, typical architect's title block. If you want to, you can change this logo to whatever you want. It's just an image that you can, you can insert any image you want into Revit and put your own logo in the corner there if you want. Um, but uh, we'll leave it like, like this for the moment. Let's just get a little bit straight before we load it in. Uh, we'll worry about that later. But basically, what, what, what I'm showing you here is um, a family editor view where you can come in here and you can change these lines, you can change any of the text, you can modify all the stuff, but you don't have to do anything to it if you don't want to. All you have to do is, once it's open, you press this button and you load it into the project that you're working on. And since we've only got one project open, it'll be loaded into this project. It gives us a message in the corner saying it can't create it in this view. And uh, that means we have to create a new sheet over here. I'm going to do this again slowly, so I'm just doing it quickly just so you see it. New sheet. And up here is the one we just loaded, A3 metric. That's OK. And it's now existing in the project. You probably haven't grasped that yet, but, but do you understand the logic of it? It's quite simple, isn't it? So far, hopefully. But then you can get any of the views that you've made. So, so this group here has made a foundation plan, a first floor plan, ground floor plan, uh, and they've, they've made it in the model, and they've also got a, uh, a 3D view here that looks something like that. We can go back into our sheet view by using the project browser here on the left, and we can always just take these plans, holding down the left button, and drag them in to the sheet like that. As many as we want. Let's say we wanted two of them like this. We can drag two of them in together. Um, now, we can modify it afterwards. We can, we can tidy it up a bit. The grids are a little bit all over the place. We won't worry about that for the moment. But let's say, let's say you're happy with that. As soon as you're happy with your sheet and how it's set up, you just press print here. And you print it to a PDF. Okay? And everybody knows what a PDF is. Yeah? You're just laughing at me. I just, but sometimes people don't know what a PDF is. Uh, so Adobe PDF... And once you do that, it will generate a file, Annex PDF, it's, it's called here. It'll set it up. And you'll get something like that, 
which is in which is in a PDF file, which you can then use to present on the screen or to print out in the printer or something like that. Okay, so I went through that really quickly. So um, should I do it again? Okay, so I'm just going to show you now. We've we've got these two drawings in the uh, in the sheet, uh, but they're kind of a little bit overlapping on top of each other. They need a little bit of editing. Uh, so you can always select it, right click, and uh, you get the option here to activate the view. And what that means is that we can actually go into the plan view, for example, within, uh, within the sheet itself. So then if I come over here to the right, and again, I'm recording this, so you don't need to have to memorize as I'm going. I can switch on uh, crop view and crop region visible. And that gives me this box here. And this box, I can just se select and stretch until I've kind of made a, c a comfortable uh, area for, uh, for the plan view we want, like that. And you can see that the, the grid lines stretch automatically uh, based on that. If I'm happy with that, I can switch off crop region visible again. It's just this little uh, tick box over in the corner. I can apply that. Right click on the sheet, deactivate the view, and now the, uh, the, the plan up here is, uh, is kind of more neatly positioned without these crazy grids going all over the place. So I'll just repeat that again. I'm going to right click on this, uh, activate the view, crop the view, make the crop region visible, and then I can uh, stretch it around until I get, uh, I can get something happening in there, like that. If I'm happy with that, I can switch off the visibility again and deactivate the view. Okay, so then we've got these two plans kind of sitting, sitting here on the screen. <coughs> and one of the key things in Revit is it's supposed to save you time. So if if we've made a plan view, it will also tell us where uh, the name of that plan view. You can see that the the names have inserted down the bottom here because the the plan was initially so big. Uh, but we can always select the name down the bottom here and uh, drag it up into position. Select it, then click on it and drag it up. So now we have the actual name, the view scale, and it's directly related to the names that you've given the views over here on the left, okay? What that means is, if I change this foundation view here uh, to something else, it will change the view uh, on the left here. You may notice that your views disappear when you when you drag them into your into your sheets, and that's just to do with uh, the way the the view panel is set up here. So you can always change how it's set up by right clicking off the top, browser organization, and uh, then if it doesn't work, we just wait for five minutes. There we go, and now we can switch it to all instead of not on sheets. So you can you can kind of filter how your how your views are displayed on the left here. If I select it to all and press apply, you can see. The, the, the views reappear again, okay? All right, if you're printing, if you want to print A3 to scale uh, on through paper cut, you just have to know which one to select. Um, so <coughs> if you go into paper cut, which is here, I have a shortcut, Let's just log in. And if you go to web print, submit a job, and uh, let's just, uh, you, if you want to print to A3, you have to choose this option, Kia PDF Virtual, down here. All the other options will, well, two of them will print in another college completely, but uh, these two here will only print at A4 size, okay? So you have to choose the final option here, uh, and then just upload your document. I made a, I made a document, didn't I? Alex, Annex PDF, like that. Upload and complete, and then it should be it should come out. It shouldn't be too much of a queue, okay? Um, probably for this project, because you're uh, you're doing all your drawings, all your your plan drawings by hand, and and uh, you're, doing, you're not doing section drawings now. You could probably use this to um, to represent, you know, the three D elements of your project. So you could just say, well, uh, I'm going to drag the three D view in here. And uh, we can always select it and scale it up a bit, 1 to 200. Oops, that was scaling it down. 1 to 50, let's say. And, uh, yeah, you can play with it and give it different, uh, different options as well. 
One quick one I can show you is just how to do a section box. I don't know if Pia showed you this, but uh, we can quickly just uh, take a box and cut through the 3D model like that so you can see what's happening on the inside. Okay, So that's kind of a nice way of describing, because if you were going to a client, he could very quickly understand how the house works just by showing him that view there. We can also do some things like this tiny little button up here will modify the graphical display uh, to make it a little bit more uh, just look better. So a few things in there. If I press edit here, I don't know why my computer is slow today, but uh, there it is. Um, we can do a couple of things. We can uh, we can turn on transparency, so we could actually make it slightly uh, translucent if you wanted to. If you wanted to show, you know, how, how that works, only use that if you really want. There's a real reason for it. Otherwise, it's uh, it's kind of confusing. Uh, we can turn on the shadows. Two types of shadows: cast shadows. If I apply that which just do shadows as if they're coming directly from the sun. Ambient shadows are kind of reflective shadows, which kind of soften. If you see it there, I don't know if you can see it on the screen there, but it's kind of softened the, uh, the light and how it works. And it's, uh, if I zoom into it, you kind of get a more, um, you can almost just about see it in the corner there, but you get a more kind of shaded uh, uh, view. Um, and uh, what else have we got in there we can show you? God, why is it so slow today? Anyway, come on. Come on. Um, we have uh, also photographic exposure. Oh, sorry, not that one. Lighting is what we want in this one, where we can turn the quality of the shadows up or down because they come in very dark. So you might want to just adjust the shadows down, maybe turn the ambient light up a bit, and it gives you a much brighter kind of uh, feeling as to what's happening in the, uh, in the house. Uh, turn the sound off a bit or whatever. Uh, has Pia talked to you about uh, uh, realistic sun position and so forth? Not yet. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it another time. Anyway, that's, that's kind of enough because that will give you a fairly uh, a decent descriptive uh, three-dimensional view of your, of your house that you can kind of use any way you want. Okay. So then if you go back into the sheet, all those modifications are obviously... Uh, taken through into the sheet and this box this dotted box will not print when you print it so you won't have these blue lines dotted around your your plan you will just have you know what you what you want to show in there so i would say some kind of a 3d view maybe a perspective view maybe a rendered view is what you want to show in your uh for your 3d model because everything else we do by hand okay i think i think i'll shut up now actually i think that's the last thing i'll say <laughs>